Well, hello everybody. This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar. So today, what I'm going to be talking about is our. Well, we will be talking about are the, the basic ventilator settings. We talked about modes, and and basically what we we realized with modes is in the initial setup of a ventilator. So I'm initially putting the patient on a ventilator, um, mechanical ventil initially instituting mechanical ventilation. The the choice of mode isn't all that important as long as the mode can provide full support when the patient is apneic. Well, what did we learn? Well, we learned that all of the major modes, assist control, SIMV, and CMV, um, are full support modes when the patient is apneic and not breathing. So if I have an apneic patient, all three modes have a mandatory rate and a mandatory volume or pressure that will be delivered so you can control the airway. So those aren't as important in the initial setup of the ventilator. And I think a lot of people can really get confused and kind of get their heads just too wrapped around the modes in the initial phases of the setup. Mode will become more important um, when we start talking about um, actually changing the ventilator to, to fit the patient's needs in what we call phase two ventilator care. Right now we're just at phase one, the initiation part. And we're already, what, six... Uh, Actually, more, close probably closer to 10 videos on just the initiation of mechanical ventilation. So now what we're going to talk about are the initial ventilator settings, and, and these are the critical settings that we need to put in. Um, again, there are lots of different settings, lots of different um, um, adjuncts that we can talk about, but right now we're just going to focus on the, the basic uh, things that we need to put into the ventilator to get the patient um, on uh, mechanical ventilation. So... The ventilator settings, and we're talking specifically about the critical settings that we need to put in. Well, the first is the mandatory rate or frequency, and what they recommend for respiratory care is 8 to 12 per minute, 8 to 12 breaths per minute, anywhere in that range, 8 to 12, 8 to 12. And obviously that's going to change once we go into phase two and we're actually adjusting the ventilator to meet the patient's needs. Again, this is just the initial setup, getting them on the ventilator. Okay, next critical setting is the tidal volume. And again, generally we're gonna start most of our adult patients, it will initially start off in volume control ventilation and then move on to things like pressure control ventilation if our patient deteriorates up to the point where we decide pressure control is needed. Okay, tidal volume, what they recommend is you start off at 8 to 12 milliliters per kilogram. And very important, this is of ideal body weight. And I'm actually going to do a video on how to, how to calculate ideal body weight. There's a formula that, that, that we'll use to do that. It is a fairly easy formula, it's not too bad, but I'm going to cover that on another video. But just know, the tidal volume is always an ideal body weight. It is not an actual weight. So if you take me, for example, I'm kind of an American-sized guy, and I have a little more poundage on me than I probably should. Uh, so if you were to calculate ventilator settings based on my actual weight, you would, uh, you would be giving me a larger volumes than they're probably necessary. Now... I know that the, if you are experienced in ventilator management, you may call me out on this and you say, well, I know that my flight company or whatever, they recommend something much lower than this. They recommend a quote-unquote lung protective strategy to prevent ARDS and lung injuries and um, inflammatory changes and so on and so forth. And I do something like 5 to 7 or 6 to 8 milliliters per kilogram. And that's okay if that's what your protocols are. Again, what we're covering here is, is relevant to respiratory care. And really what they recommend is anywhere from about 8 to 12 milliliters per kilogram. And when we get into lung protective strategies, we're no longer talking about the initial setup, initially getting our patient on a ventilator. When we're initiating lung protective strategies, we are no longer in phase one of ventilator management. We're in phase two where our patient's having some problems and we are now changing the ventilator settings to meet the patient's needs. So we, we, we don't initially start off on the really low tidal volumes, um, the lung protective strategies, at, at least uh, for the case of respiratory care. 
um, when you talk about board exams and so on. Now, you may, and that's okay. I, I, I'm not aware of, of a lot of sm any smoking gun literature out there that, that, that says if, if you put every patient on 5 milliliters per kilogram that um, th they'll, do, they'll do better. Um, but certainly in the case of, of, of uh, diseases like, well, the ARDS really isn't disease. ARDS is actually um, caused by a disease or a disease process. ARDS is more of a manifestation of something gone terribly wrong. Um, but certainly in, in those cases, you, you're going to want to institute some sort of lung protective strategy to prevent, you know, volume trauma, to try to limit the, the impact of high airway pressure, specifically the plateau pressure. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the down and dirty to get a patient on a ventilator. Okay, so tidal volume. Uh, the next is the FiO2. And what they recommend is, is use whatever FiO2 that the patient was on prior to intubation. So prior to intubation. And that's a, a really good um, rule of thumb. So if it's a, an emergency situation and I'm doing bag mask ventilation, 100% FiO2 on a patient that you know is 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 in a crisis situation. Then clearly, uh, it's okay to start off at an FiO2 of one. Now, I do understand that we get like to get our FiO2 under 60% um, if we can. However, we're just talking about the initial down and dirty settings, and and, and we we recognize that there are, are issues associated with high FiO2s. And we're doing these settings with the caveat that we will come back and fine-tune everything to our patient in the phase two care, but right now we're just in phase one. Okay, so FiO2, prior to whatever they were, so if it's, say, a COPD patient and they're on 40%, uh, maybe a CPAP or BiPAP system, and they, they end up pooping out on us, and we decide to innovate, you know, it is okay to, you know, go 40 or 50% on your, your initial settings. Um, certainly, if it's an emergency situation, you know, 100% is acceptable as well. Okay, so that's our FiO2, our P, positive index by true pressure, anywhere from uh, 0 to 5 centimeters of water is acceptable. And then our sensitivity. And our sensitivity is how much it takes for our patient to suck, to draw down on the ventilator before the ventilator recognizes, hey, I think that patient's trying to take a breath. There are two ways that we can trigger the ventilator. So there are two types of sensitivity. There's something called pressure, okay, something called pressure sensitivity, and there's something called flow. In pressure sensitivity, if I'm, if I'm sucking down, um, the ventilator has to uh, recognize that I'm pulling back, I'm sucking back with a certain amount of pressure. As a general rule of thumb, we're going to go right around negative two centimeters of water. If I make the ventilator less sensitive, it makes it, a less sensitive ventilator means that the patient has to draw down with much more force to trigger it. A more sensitive ventilator means that the patient doesn't have to draw down with as much force. So if I set my pressure at negative 5, that would be less sensitive because the patient has to work harder to trigger it. Whereas if I set it at negative 1, the ventilator will be more sensitive because the patient doesn't have to draw down as hard. So hopefully that makes sense. Now in flow triggering, the ventilator has to sense a certain amount of flow. The patient is pulling back and there's a certain amount of flow in liters per minute and the general rule of thumb is two liters per minute and again if I make this ventilator less sensitive maybe I go to five liters per minute the patient has to pull back with a higher flow rate before the ventilator will acknowledge or trigger versus one liter per minute which is more sensitive and the patient is pulling back with less flow before the ventilator senses and is triggered. Okay, so these are the basic settings, and again, this is just the initial setup of our patient on the ventilator, and we'll talk about some of the, 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 the specialized strategies here in, in a little bit. Okay, guys, take care. Thank you.